are counting down on what's being called an earth-shattering announcement out of NASA. Experts calculating and speculating that the American Space Agency may have found life in outer space. What do you think, America, huh? Some form of extraterrestrial life on Titan, which is one of Saturn's moons. Michio Kaku is a theoretical physics professor, host of the Science Channel series Sci-Fi Science Physics of the Impossible, and he is one smart man. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's been a while. Is this mm -hmm. the real deal, or are you kind of iffy on this one? Well, what the only think? aliens that we've identified are in the United States Congress. <laughs> <laughs> we have yet to find a real alien or capture a real flying saucer. However, I would <laughs> bet that what they have discovered is chemicals, chemicals of life, like oxygen, water vapor, amino acids, organic compounds, on Titan, the moon of Saturn, or maybe on a, a distant planet. And also, we do have two satellites in outer space, the Kepler and the Corot. We expect dozens of Earth-like twins to be identified by these two satellites. And that's a game changer, realizing that we could have copies, Xerox copies of the Earth in outer space. All right, but those are planets. What they expect today are microbes, right? I mean, that's the anticipated announcement that there is evidence that has been found, albeit well, smaller than we can see with the eye. Right. We're not talking about E.T. We're talking about microbial life at best. Uh -huh. That is germs perhaps existing on a, a distant moon or a, a distant planet in outer space. We're not talking about intelligent life. We're not talking about UFOs. We're talking about germs, bacteria, viruses perhaps being found on a distant uh, celestial life object. Life forms that live off of poisonous arsenic? doesn't sound like a good life. Well, we, we live here based on water and carbon. That's our body chemistry. However, in outer space, perhaps they use silicon. Perhaps they use a different form of chemistry than us. Why should they be water-based? Why should they be carbon-based like us? And that's a speculation. The speculation mm -hmm. is that they could be another kind of life in outer space. Okay, now there was a report from Phil Keating last hour. He says one of the scientists involved in this has studied a lake in Yosemite National Park and she found high levels, I guess, of arsenic in, in that water. And then she was able to extrapolate, make the connection deep into space with the Martian moon Titan and perhaps Saturn's largest moon as well. Now, figure that one out for us. Well, the speculation is that life can exist in very inhospitable places, like the bottom of the ocean near volcano vents. Who would have thought that the sulfurous, uh, hot, uh, volcano vents on the bottom of the ocean could be perhaps where the first DNA got off the ground. So perhaps DNA can exist in arsenic environments or ammonia, methane environments, because that's probably where our first DNA got off the ground, on the bottom of the oceans. Uh-huh. So on a scale of 1 to 10, today's announcement is a... I'd give it a 4. 4? <laughs> well, maybe they'll surprise even you, Michio, because right. we're going to cover the announcement later live today. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, so. All right. Michio, thank you for your time. At 2 o'clock... I must disagree with my esteemed <laughs> colleague there. Okay. Except First of all, part. let me say yeah. that <laughs> science is the engine of prosperity. From steam power to electricity to the laser to the transistor <coughs> to the computer. That's not true. We're That's talking technology. about. Hey, mate, hey, can I have my, can sure. I have my <laughs> say? Okay. Sure. You had your say. Let yes. me have my say. Yes. However, the information revolution has a weakness, and the weakness is precisely the educational system. The United States has the worst educational system known to science. Our graduates compete regularly at the level of third world countries. So how come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? If we're producing uh, a generation of dummies, if the stupid index of America keeps rising every year, just watch network television and reality shows, right? How come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? Let me tell you something. Some of you may not know this. America has a secret weapon. That secret weapon is the H-1B. Without the H-1B, the scientific establishment of this country would collapse. Forget about Google. Forget about Silicon Valley. There would be no Silicon Valley without, without the H-1B. And you know what the H-1B is? It's the genius visa, OK? You realize that in the United States, 50% of all PhD candidates are foreign born. At my system, one of the biggest in the United States, 100% of the PhD candidates are foreign born. The United States is a magnet sucking up all the brains of the world, but now the brains are going back. Right. They're going back to China. They're going back to India. And people are saying, oh my God, there's a Silicon Valley in India now. Oh my God, there's a Silicon Valley in China. Duh.
Where did it come from? It came from the United States. So don't tell me that science isn't the engine of prosperity. You remove the H-1B visa and you collapse the economy. In Wall Street Journal, editorialized against a congressman who wanted to ban the H-1B, saying they'll take jobs away from the American people. The Wall Street Journal said, look, there are no Americans who can take these jobs. These are at the highest level of high technology. They don't take away jobs from Americans. They create entire industries. We, and so that's why we have an Achilles heel, and that's the educational system. The and again, the irony, sociology the majors is, are not necessarily going to be the ones determining the future of Silicon Valley. The, I, but physicists, okay. the engineers, is, the we need more of them, not less. The irony is, the irony is, The irony is, I, I agree with the immigration issues, the what you're saying, uh, and I'm at a school, of course, and Peter's a graduate of a school where, where indeed, immigration Your school is. wouldn't exist without the H-1B. Of course, of course, but, I, but I'm We've not... We've got to get back to the future not, of business But hold second. on a second. I'm not... No, 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 no. I'm not arguing against an, H, an H-1B. I, I completely agree with this issue, and, and the point on the future of business that he's making, which is very, very important, is the nature of human capital. What is misunderstood here is, again, how poorly run schools are. MIT is a notable exception in this regard. His school, his school, his school is not. Because what happens is they, they run in these introductory science and engineering classes at Illinois and Wisconsin and Michigan. They run freshman and sophomore years as flunk out operations. They, 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 they do it to, they, they run it as a boot camp. And then people are surprised that people don't take science, that they don't take the STEM courses. The point that I'm trying to make, which, is, which I think is, a, is an important one in this regard, is that the way educational systems are set up right now is that we have distorted incentives that undermine the ability for America to have a homegrown uh, science and technology system.